Poso. We're here on a Menominee seasonal site where garden beds were present, burials behind us, medicine area way far away, uh, the lifeblood, a summer seasonal area for Menominee. If we look towards the ground here, we see evidence of a raised bed gardens. The plants were planted up on top. We had drainage here on the bottom, usually planted close to a water source. We have uh, Wakey Creek here flowing to the Wolf River. We used it uh, to bring water in to the garden sites. These garden beds were usually planted with corns, bean, squash, and any other types of food, food plants that were preferred by these people. Um, each clan had their own garden bed sites. Um, we also have areas here where medicinal plants were planted. If you can see this wider area here, this is evidence of where medicinal plants were planted close in together. Medicine plants were planted here that were specific to that clan or that group of people. Each group had their own medicine. A lot of these areas where the prehistoric meets, the clans would come back to these areas year after year. You can see that stretch into the historic period, the historic periods 1850 to present when the reservation was recognized as a reservation where we were told to come back to this area here. Um, when they came back in 1850, all the bands had to come back to this area, to this reservation. They, they uh, tended to favor the areas that their ancestors came back to. So the original settlement areas here from 1850 are areas that were occupied thousands of years ago. In Menominee belief, um, each community has elder plants. Now in this community, um, corn would be considered an elder plant. Um, these larger pine trees were left within the beds. These would be considered elder plants. Elder plants determine the character and what type of plants go around in, in this local community. Um, they had the job of lifting water 24 hours a day up to help water all of these plants. Um, during the day, they'd create a microclimate, uh, basically would keep moisture in the air for all the surrounding plants. At nighttime, when the, when the leaves or the needles shut down because there were no sun, um, in the darkness, it would continue lifting water up to the surface of the ground, feeding all the local plants here. You see a good example of an elder tree here, um, lifting water up here. Um, you get, in, get evidence of this was a wide open area. You see the lower branching on the trees. That means that there were no other trees here other than this tree. Um, you see some of these trees within here where there are no branches. That means they, that pretty much says that they came after after um, the elder trees. They're younger trees because it was more cover, more um, shade in here. But these represent the elder trees. I'd estimate some of these um, elder trees, I call them, to be about 270, 280 years old. Uh, most of these trees are a lot younger, probably 100, 120. The belief is that um, all these plants communicated underground to each other with the elder plant being the one who controlled everything what goes on. There were certain plants that were basically medicine plants for the other plants in the area. They um, provided medicine. Say a uh, uh, disease came in on a certain section of plants uh, or an insect attack on a certain section of plants medicine would be transferred um, 
buy the elder plant from one other part of the community to where it was needed. That keeps the whole cycle or the whole system healthy. Certain plants would be grown um, depending on the year. The Menominee is believed in a four year weather cycle where you have the first two years are nice, even, average weather, and then you have a third year where you have, um, you might have a lot of snow, you might have a lot of rain, you might have cold, a lot of heat. It's the weird weather basically. And then the fourth year would be a recovery year where the stress of the third year would produce seed in a lot of the plants. And most of the Menominee's harvesting a seed would be the, that fourth year when you had to have a huge seed crop because of the stresses of that year three weather. In a lot of sites, you'll see garden beds where you'll have garden beds close to the water source and you'll have garden beds up on higher ground. A lot of the reason was to rotate crops using the four year weather cycle. On the third year, when you're expecting floods or you know, a lot of snow down below, you'd move your crops up on the higher ground in order to grow them for that year and then move back down. Because you're expecting in a flood year, you'd have a lot of water flowing up from the creek area, you'd have flooding up in, into the garden beds up through these troughs where it would regenerate the soil and give you another um, good eight, about eight years of growing. And like I said earlier, all plants are communal plants. They like growing together. They like that company. They don't like to be grown apart. Like a lot of the modern farming, it was uh, closely packed together, creating that perfect growing environment. All these seasonal settlement areas, long time ago, they were all set up in a certain arrangement. The garden beds were here. The burial mounds would be up off the edge of the garden beds, where the, the children and the, and, and the younger people who managed the gardens would be able to watch over their ancestors within the burial mounds. Um, any practice of medicine would be further away from the camp. And in a lot of these garden beds, it was represented as the four orders of humankind in Menominee belief. Um, with the creation of the Great Turtle Island, or Grandmother Earth, as we call it now, the first order of life was the life flowed through the rocks. The rocks were the first. The second order of life was the plants. The plants appeared on the catch Makana, Manas, or Great Turtle Island. The third order of life, or transition of life, would be from plant to animal, which was told to me was northwest of where the present day Menominee is. And the fourth order of life is humans. So we had all four orders of humankind within the garden beds represented. We always had um, storage areas where we stored our food. Some of it that was harvested in, within the beds were stored in these storage pits in order to keep, keep the food for the next year. When uh, upon return back to the beds, they had a food source that they could tap or use. Here we have uh, what we call storage pits. Um, they were basically hourglass shaped, but over time they've kind of filled in, so they they just look like a, maybe a dimple in the ground. This would probably be the main village area where the where the wigwams would be, or the summer houses would be situated. Like I said, these are natural storage when you store your food properly underground. It's like a refrigerator, like we have nowadays. If you can see this hill that gently flows down here, um, back when back when these beds were occupied, probably close to a thousand years ago, um, when they were truly active, the water level was up higher than it is today. So the outline, the shoreline of the Wolf River would be this hill here. So the village site would be just on top of here. The beds are right next to the village site. And 
and the mounds would be the furthest away. At one time we'd be walking in the water right now. As you can see, a nice view of the edge of the Wolf River. You gotta remember it was a climatic time. The glaciers were melting, uh, lots of water was flowing. Um, you had periods of uh, weather extremes where a lot of rain, a lot of snow, a lot of cold. We're coming down to part of the actual trail. We're actually on the trail here. If you look back, you can see where it, where it came down through the valley of the hills. We're actually walking on probably 10 to 12,000 year old trail here. And this is the freeway of long ago. The four lane highway, if you want to call it that. Contrary to a lot of, a lot of the history books say that we were we strictly traveled on water, um, which isn't true. If we wanted to get somewhere really fast, we took the river, but most of our travel was along trails. There's a whole trail system up here on the reservation. Back then, they didn't have bridges a long time ago. You had to cross the river by foot, get into the water, get your feet wet down by the Wolf River. Uh, here was the crossing. You have two river systems coming together here. Uh, one from, from the west here and one from the north. Um, the trail crossed directly diagonal here across the river. Water level is real shallow. You had another stopping point over here, a small village site over here with no garden beds. It was more of a rest area. There were areas on the reservation where you could stop. There were storage pits there, you know, food stored there for people traveling, basically giving back and forth, helping, helping your fellow native or fellow people. And it's not just Menominee tribe, it's all the tribes that travel. Um, everybody helping each other out. So you have your prehistoric, which are thousands of years ago in these areas, up through the historic. So uh, you have a whole history within one area that's pretty much undisturbed. And there's not many places on earth that you can see such a time level, you know, a layering of time in so many different areas.